Hello friends, this is Dr. R.B. Kuswa, Associate Professor in the Division of Veterinary Clinical Complex, FVSC and AH, SCOS, Jammu, RS Pura, Jammu. Welcome to my YouTube channel and if you are new to my channel, so kindly subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for the further notification. Today, uh, we are going to discuss about the follow-up case of femur fracture or supracondylar femur fracture in a dog, a radiographic view, uh, which I have uh, uploaded. So, this is the link for uh, that particular uh, radiographic uh, discussion of the dynamic cross spinning. So this is the radiograph uh, on day zero. So this is the mediolateral uh, view of the fractured femur bone before operation. So you could see this is the uh, long proximal fracture fragment and this is the very short distal fracture fragment. So this distal fracture fragment is just above the condyle. So that is why it is called the supracondylar fracture. So this fracture end you could see here it is very close to his skin. This is the patella and these are the two favelae which are looking at in down position. So this is the immediately after uh, doing the cross spinning. So this is the mediolateral view of the this cross spinning. So you could see uh, this spin, although in the mediolateral view it is very difficult to say uh, from where it crosses, but uh, the pin one pin is uh, inserted from the lateral epicondyle and other one is inserted from the medial epicondyle. And this one is the uh, craniocardial view of the this fractured uh, bone and. Uh, this is the craniocardial view of the supracondylar fracture immediately after repair with the cross spinning. So you could see how beautifully uh, the crossing uh, has occurred. So this crossing occurred at the mid diaphysis which is the desired one. So this is the mediolateral view and the craniocardial view of the same animal uh, on day 7. So if you see on day 7, though, still the 2 K wire are remains in the position means uh, there is no uh, migration either proximally or distally and the alignment is also very very good so you could see so this is the cranial cortical uh, alignment and this is the posterior alignment so here you could see if you see from the previous uh, uh, day zero radiographs you will find here the callus formation has started although on day seven or uh, in a one week it is very difficult to appreciate whatever the changes occur in the bone by radiographically but still uh, the little bit the callus formation we could appreciate here so and the overall the position of the bone is very very good from this mediolateral view it appears that the end of the this uh, k wire is touching the patella or it is uh, emerges from the articular surface but this is the not case because here the depth of the is not uh, in this particular view because the radiograph is the two-dimensional view of the three-dimensional uh, object but if you see the same things here in the craniocaudal view then you could appreciate okay the end of the pin is uh, within the uh, condyles uh, and if it is you can say even if it is crosses here up to this level so it will not affect the gliding of the this patella over the trochlea because patella glides over here so never confuse with that if such type of things happen so never confuse that the bone uh, the pin ends uh, touches the patella or it is crosses the articular surface and here if you see in the craniocaudal view so it is very difficult to say because the quality of this radiograph is not up to the mark but even you could appreciate the little bit you can say union of the this uh, cortical line so uh, after day seven uh, owner didn't turn up for the further follow-up examination because animal was doing good the except uh, the animal was not able to bear weight completely because of the the range of motion of the stifle joint was affected little bit as we performed uh, this procedure by doing the arthrotomy that is by opening the joint stifle joint so that uh, definitely uh, hampered the range of motion then owner uh, turn up on day 47 uh, for the further radiograph and uh, he requested that uh, if it's healed so kindly remove the this uh, both k wire so this is the mediolateral view of the dynamic cross spinning uh, on day 47 so you could appreciate the alignment of the bone and the fixation or the position of the both uh, k wires so here you could see uh, the patella is uh, uh, nicely placed over the trochlea here you could see the 
little bit extra callous formation and this is because that so indirectly that there was some little bit movement at this fracture site because the animal is very young it is around six or seven months old so they have agile ability to to walk here and there even jump so that's uh, uh, causes micro movement at the, this uh, fracture site so this created the little bit extra callus formation and uh, if you see the uh, this tibia tibia is, is all right there's no problem and if you see the craniocaudal view on day 47 so here you could appreciate that okay the there is a no line uh, on this craniocaudal view and this extra callus is seen towards the, this is the lateral side it means overall by combining the both view we could say that this extra callus formation is at the uh, caudal and the lateral side so th this is the crossing of the, this uh, both uh, uh, key wire and uh, on the basis of this uh, medial lateral and craniocaudal view and even on the physical examination and the condition of the animal then we decided to go for the removal of the this both k wire from the trochanteric fossa so this is the medial lateral view and this is the craniocaudal view of the same animal on day 47 uh, immediately after the pin removal so it is just to show how uh, the medial lateral view and craniocaudal view looks after removing the pin so for removal of the pin uh, we anesthetize the patient completely uh, by the giving the same combination uh, which we have given on the day of operation that is uh, by a combination of the cetropane, gelatin, uh, propofol and then maintenance on the isoflurane anesthesia. So for removal of pin, uh, we simply uh, give the incision just over the uh, trochanteric fossa and uh, by blunt dissection of the subcutaneous tissue and then we palpate it with the fingertip, the tip of the, this uh, K wire and then with the help of the plier, then we remove the pin one by one. So first we remove the medial pin means uh, that pin inserted from the lateral epicondyle and then we remove the uh, lateral pin means that pin uh, inserted from the medial epicondyle so after removal of the this both pin we just uh, apply the one uh, figure of eight uh, suture pattern and then we uh, apply the bandage this is how we remove the pin and this is the immediately after removal of the, this pin so this is the medial lateral view so you could see disappearance of the fracture line only here slight uh, radiolucent uh, area is seen uh, so that uh, will definitely also heal uh, when, uh, as the time passes and the main is you could see here the caudal surface uh, there is a exuberant type of callus formation or extra callus formation which hold you can say both fragments uh, together and this one is the craniocaudal view so craniocaudal view the further you could see here so there is a uh, no break in the continuity or in other words you could see here there is a the continuity of the this uh, medial uh, cortex and this lateral cortex is also continue but because of the hair there's the extra callus formation so it appears like that so all these uh, with the time appears normal or is to goes towards the normal when remodeling take place so this is all about the this follow-up case of the supracondylar fracture in a uh, six-month-old uh, golden retriever dog. So thank you very much for watching uh, this video. And if you like this video, so kindly share with your friends and subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed the channel yet. Thank you very much.